And so what I've brought is a nice box. <laughs> uh, I have many of these pili cases. And inside this pili case, and this is some, some nice coincidence, uh, I have some USB scope that perfectly fits in there. Um, so I have, a, I have a good box to transport this sensitive piece of equipment. So this is some USB oscilloscope. It has two channels, two input channels, and it has one channel that is called AWG. And the AWG abbreviation stands for Arbitrary Waveform Generator. So I have a source. I have a generator to generate signals and I have two channels to measure signals. And on the back side there is a USB port and with this USB port I can connect this to my computer. Uh, what I will do in a second. And um, before I do this, yeah, so the, the, the idea of my experiment now is that I generate a signal with this generator and just this, this very short cable feed it in one of the um, inputs and then there I can generate different signals here and we can take a look at the different signals over there. That's the idea. So yeah, I mean, now it does not look so spectacular anymore. So I have not prepared um, another camera for this and I think now I have to remove my mouse. Bing bing, and I have to connect the scope. And then my mouse is not working anymore. Uh, so I have to use my touchpad, and the corresponding software for this is called PicoScope. This is also the um, uh, manufacturer of the scope and of the software. And if we start it, it looks like this. Um, so now at the moment it's just measuring noise. So the scale here is millivolt and we have 20 microseconds per division. There is nothing there. And so j just to show how, how signals look like, uh, if we look at them in time domain, I can, for example, create a sine wave signal with different frequencies here set to one kilohertz and one volt of amplitude. And if I switch on the signal, then it looks like this. You see that it's already going up and down. And um, the, the periodic time at one kilohertz would be, how large is the periodic time at one kilohertz? One, it should be one millisecond. So if I uh, increase the time here and go to one millisecond, then we can see, okay, now one millisecond is one division. This could fit to the periodic time of the signal here. And you can see, okay, here is 0 0.8, here is 1.2, the amplitude one volt could fit. So why do, not, why do I not get a steady picture in this case? What am I missing in my settings here? Have you ever done oscilloscope measurements? And what, what do I set, need to set to get a clear picture of my sinusoidal wave and that it's not jittering around anymore? Any ideas in the chat? Oh, and now my camera switched off. Um, so let me fix my camera. Any, any ideas what I need to set in the, um, at the instrument to get a clear picture? Uh, I need to have a trigger. So if I set the trigger to automatic, uh, then at this point it will check for a rising edge and every time there is a rising edge then it will start to make a new picture. And so because of this fixed point now, um, I get a clear picture. So this is how sinusoidal waves look like. I can also do rectangular waves. Uh, I can also do triangular waves. I could also do something like sawtooth 
that is going up. I could do sawtooth that is going down. I could also do different signals. Here's some sinus x over x, but this, from my point of view, it does not make too much sense. Let's stay to this um, signals that we had before. Yeah, this would be some, some rectified signal. Here my trigger also does not really work because there's just one short point where we cross the zero there. Okay, um, and I can set different arbitrary signals. Um, for example, also a rectangular pulse chain. And here I could also change the, the duty cycle. And for example, just go to 25%. Um, and maybe go with the minimum up and the maximum also up. Right, and if I would do something like this, then I would get rectangular, a rectangular pulse train with just 25% of duty cycle. Okay, um, so I will switch the signal off once again. So no signal. And now I can go into spectral mode. I can set the software in a way that it will analyze the spectrum. So let's go there. And then it does something. And you can see that even if I have no signal at the moment, I'm measuring something at 1.6 megahertz, at 3. Point something megahertz. I don't know where these disturbances come from. Maybe um, at least I've not seen them yesterday at home, uh, but maybe this is some artifact from the USB connection, some signals from the HDMI cable and so on. But we are not really interested in that high frequencies. That's why I will um, no, change the setting here so that we will just go to smaller frequencies, um, let's say in, in this frequency range. Um, still, there are some disturbances there. Interesting. Um, this must be something in the university. I've checked it yesterday at my home. There were no disturbances like this. But this, you can see they are, they are very, very small. So uh, no problem. And I could then change the frequency setting also to be logarithmic so that we have more focus on the low frequencies. And then you can choose a different number of frequencies that go into this fast Fourier transform. And you can see they are all multiples of two. Um, or not, not multiples of two, they are all powers of two. What I've just explained, this will give you a fast Fourier transform. So let's take a smaller number like this one. And um, as a windowing function, I will use no window at all. I will just use something rectangular. And maybe change the unit of the axis of the amplitude axis into dB volt, because this is what we already know, what we, what we discussed. OK, so now um, let's try out different signals. If we have just a DC voltage with zero volt, what should happen? Nothing. We sh should not see anything. OK, this somehow works. Now, if we go, for example, to 1 volt, or maybe to 0 0.5, um, so there's some, some short clipping. and. So now, of course, we just have a DC voltage. There are no frequency components in there, just a DC part. And we see this DC part. So now the question is, OK, um, the DC part is how large here? 0 dB, 0 dB volt. If we would convert 0 dB volt into volt, How many volt is 0 dB volt? One. one, exactly, one. But I've just said half a volt, not one volt. So why do I measure here one volt, even if I've just said 0 0.5 volt? And the answer is, um, here in, in, in one of the equations that we discussed for the Fourier series, 
this one here. So um, we, are, we are measuring this one. We are measuring one volt, but the, the, the DC part of the signal is this divided by two. So some small detail that you need to take care of when doing such analysis like this. There's a nice saying of um, a math uh, American um, engineering professor Tapan Zaka, who once said, um, the FFT uh, or the fast Fourier transform is the most misused tool in EMC because everyone uses it and no one really understands how it works and no one cares about these small details. So we have set half a volt, we are measuring one volt here because of this factor of or this division by two there. Okay, so then let's take a different signal, let's take a signed signal um, and let's remove this offset here once again. And so now our sinus signal contains exactly one frequency. And it's not just this particular frequency, there is also something around there. And this is due to measurement uncertainties and due to discretization noise and so on and so on. But in general, our sinusoidal signal has just this one frequency. And as you can see, if I change the frequency, the, the peak in the spectrum just hops from one frequency to the other frequency. Okay, so now, for example, if we go to some rectangular pulse train, uh, as we discussed before, we have some fundamental frequency. We have no second harmonic, but we have a third harmonic. And the third harmonic has a third, a third of the amplitude. A factor of three in dB for root power quantities is about minus 10 dB. So we go down here by minus 10 dB. And so from then we have no fourth harmonic, but the fifth one, we have no sixth harmonic, but the seventh one. And you can see that they go, they would go down with a straight line, at least up to here. And then we have some artifacts once again, due to the measurement. If I, if I change my, the number of frequency bins a little bit, uh, you can see that this, the behavior of the curve there changes, uh, depending on what you set here. Uh, so you, you, you already need to know a little bit how should your result look like so that you can use proper settings for this. But here we have this fundamental frequency and we have all the harmonics and they will go down with frequency. Okay, so what else can I, can I select? I could also select um, a triangular wave function. So from what I've told you before, what would you expect for the triangular wave function? What, what, what should happen to the spectrum? We should get the very same as before, but it should not go down with 20 dB per decade. It should go more rapidly down. It should go down with minus 40 dB per decade because this is what we, what we discussed here, right? Uh, for the, for the, um, for the rectangular pulse, it goes down like this. For the um, triangular pulse, it goes more rapidly down. So we can check this out, go to a triangular pulse, and you can see, oh, yeah, we have this fundamental frequency, but now it's going down stronger. Um, so the triangular pulse does not have so many high frequency components because it, you don't have these jumps anymore. It does not change so rapidly in time. That's why there are not, not so high frequency components in there. And the last thing that we can maybe uh, take a look at if I go to this um, arbitrary waveform generator and if I go back to some um, cycle of 50%, maybe like this. Yeah. So this is the rectangular function that we had before. No, this is something else. Uh, I just need to have one cycle. Okay. Yeah. So this is the rectangular function that we before. One kilohertz, nothing at two kilohertz, three kilohertz, nothing at four, and so on. So here is one null in the spectrum. Here's one zero crossing in the spectrum, one zero crossing in the spectrum, and so on and so on. So now, um, and this is what we what we will also do in the exercise. So it's a little bit a spoiler of the exercise. 
if we change this duty cycle to 25%, which is 1 over 4, yeah, so now I've changed it to 25% to, to 1 over 4, then now just every fourth frequency is a zero crossing. So we have 1, 2, 3 spectral components, the fourth one is zero. Then we have 1, 2, 3 components, the next one is zero. 1, 2, 3 components, the next one is zero, and so on. If I change the duty cycle to maybe 20%, and 20% is 1 over 5, what would you expect? That every fifth frequency is zero. So if we check now 1 over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth one is zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth one is zero, and so on. If we go to uh, 1 over 10, 10%, so now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the tenth frequency is 0. And another 9 frequency components, the next tenth frequency is 0, and so on and so on. Um, I mean, I could go to smaller frequencies, then we maybe see this effect a bit more pronounced, not really. Now I would maybe go to a higher number of bins. And maybe even higher number of bins. And hopefully my computer survives this. No, nah, it's not really getting better. I should I should maybe stay with the settings that we had before. But but you get the idea. Um, that let me go back to one kilohertz. That now every tenth frequency is zero. And if I would go to one over five, now every twentieth frequency would be zero, and so on and so on. And so you can see now that um, this is the effect that I would like to show. Um, now we have a very short pulse and a very long time until the next pulse comes. So um, if I would continue and continue and continue, it, it's almost like a single pulse. And the single pulse means we have a continuous spectrum. We have many frequencies in the spectrum. So now we have I mean, in this case, it's still discrete lines, but they, they, in comparison with the zero crossings that we have here and here and here and there, they get denser and denser and denser together. That's the idea.